Hey, I'm so glad you joined me to solve some absolute value equations, including two special cases. I want to start, though, with this one, the absolute value of x plus 2 equals 5. Now, a lot of us are familiar with absolute value. We know that we just need to take off the negative sign. So whatever was inside of these absolute value bars to equal a 5 on the outside could have either been equal to a positive 5 or a negative 5. This is going to get me to the same two cases that we're going to use for every single example. So we've got, for our two cases, that positive case for what's inside the x plus 2 equals 5, and then the negative case where what we've got inside is equal to a negative 5. And I'm just going to solve those two separately. Um, here comes the first one. So if x plus 2 equals 5, I can go ahead and subtract a 2 from both sides, and I end up with one of my solutions, x is equal to 3. On the other side, the negative case, I've got x plus 2 is equal to negative 5. But I solve this exactly the same way. Let's go ahead and subtract a 2 from both sides, and I end up with x is equal to negative 7. So I've got two cases for these absolute value equations, which means that I've got two possible solutions. In this next one, we've got a little more going on, but I still have the same two cases. In that positive case, I drop the absolute value bars, and I've got what's inside equals 7, and the negative case what's inside is equal to negative 7. Let's go ahead and solve both of these. So for that positive case, 2x minus 1 is equal to 7. I'm going to use my multi-step equation tools, and that would be to add or subtract first to get x's on one side and numbers on the other. So I get 2x is equal to 7 plus 1, which is equal to 8. But that's 2 times x, so I need to undo the 2 times by dividing. So as I divide both sides, I get x by itself, and then 8 divided by 2 is equal to 4. Here comes that negative case. 2x minus 1 is equal to negative 7. Now my steps are going to be exactly the same. I'm going to start by adding the 1 to get variables on one side and numbers on the other. So I've got 2x, my variable term, all alone. Negative 7 plus 1, this time is negative 6. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get x by itself, and I have my second solution of negative 3. So that gives me my two solutions of either a 4 or a negative. This is one of our special cases, and in this one, I've got an absolute value equal to a negative 2. Now, if you've done absolute value of numbers before, you know that you always take the negative off. So these absolute value can never equal a negative number, which means this one is super easy. Our answer is no solution. This next one has a lot going on. Before I can apply those two cases, I first need to isolate that absolute value. So I need it to be all by itself on one side. So I've got the 3 minus 2 absolute value 3x plus 3 is equal to 1. And I'm going to start by adding or subtracting first. To get the absolute value by itself, I need to start by getting rid of the 3 from that absolute value side. So I'm going to subtract a 3 from both sides. I get negative 2, absolute value, 3x plus 3, is equal to 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. Now it's just going to be negative for a second, so we're okay to continue. This negative 2 is actually multiplied times my absolute value, so I'm going to divide both sides by a negative 2. Divide both sides by a negative 2. Okay, I finally have the absolute value of 3x plus 3 is equal to negative 2 divided by negative 2, which is equal to 1. And I am ready for my two cases. So here come my two cases. I've got the positive case, where what is inside is equal to 1. And then I've got my negative case, where what is inside is equal to negative 1. One. Let's go ahead and solve each of these. So I subtract the 3, subtract the 3, I'll do the positive case first. I get 3x is equal to 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And if I divide both sides by 3, 
I get x is equal to negative 2 thirds. So there's my first solution. In the second case, I'm going to follow exactly the same steps, starting with subtracting a 3 from both sides. That gives me 3x is equal to negative 1 minus 3 is equal to negative 4. And then divide both sides by 3, and I get my second solution of x is equal to negative 4 thirds. How are you doing so far? In this last one, I've got two absolute values, one on either side of the equation. Luckily, we don't need to really change much. I'm gonna have my same two cases. I'm gonna have my positive case. In that positive case, I'm just dropping the absolute value bars, leaving everything as is. So I've got 5x plus one is equal to 7x minus four. And then in my negative case, just like I had done before, I'm gonna drop the absolute values I'm going to leave the left-hand side as is, and I'm going to make the other side negative. So the other side, the whole thing, 7x minus 4. So I've got my positive case, and I've got my negative case. Now that I've got my two cases, let's go ahead and solve. I'm going to start with that positive case. I do want numbers on one side and variables on the other. I'm actually going to get numbers on the left and x's on the right. That way I can subtract the 5x minus 5x. And I have just a 1 left here is equal to 7x minus 5x. 7 minus 5 is 2 minus 4. I'm going to add a 4 to both sides to get numbers on the other side. And then I have 5 is equal to 2x. Now I need to divide both sides by uh, 2. So dividing both sides by 2, I get 5 halves is equal to x. So there's one of my solutions. Let's go ahead and do the next one. In the next one, I'm not ready to jump in and add and subtract. Instead, I need to simplify by distributing that negative. So I've got 5x plus 1 is equal to, let's distribute that negative, negative times 7x. And then negative times negative 4 is positive 4. Now again, I want to get numbers on one side and variables on the other. I really like to try for positive x's. It's just a thing, I guess. So I'm going to put my x's on this side and my numbers on the right. So I'm going to start by adding the 7x. Add the 7x. And I end up with 12 x plus 1, 5 plus 7, is equal to, the 7 x's go away, and I've got is equal to a 4. Now I still need to get numbers on the other side, so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1, and I have 12 x, the 1's add up to 0, is equal to 3. I've got one more step here, let me move that up just a little bit, one more step here, and that's to divide by that 12. So divided by 12, divided by 12. I end up with x is equal to 3 twelfths, but 3 goes into both the numerator and the denominator. So I can actually simplify this. 3 into 3 goes 1 time. 3 into 12 goes 4 times. So I end up with my two solutions, either a 5 halves or a 1 fourth. You are doing fantastic. Take a look at my next video here on graphing and the coordinate system. Thanks for watching.